Bhutan, a holy Buddhist kingdom. Young monks are practicing sacred dance and learning their own tradition and art. But it's not all about dance and tradition. Behind that, you can explore a more spiritual inner world. Documentary World. Living Cultures. Tonight at 9. And welcome to the Financial Report. I'm Anne Marie Sim. And Hong Kong shares ended higher today following the release of solid economic data from Beijing. The Hang Seng Index gained 151 points to finish at 21,807 on turnover of $44 billion. Mainland economic numbers did give markets a positive jolt today, but the effect wore out quite quickly, and investors were only very selectively coming back into the market. Let's check on those numbers. China Unicom added 26 cents, but a loss of 45 cents for China Mobile, while Tencent added a dollar. China Shenhua added $1.35, a gain of 50 cents for HSBC, while Bank of China added a cent. The Hong Kong dollar exchange rate to the US dollar 775, 1204 to the pound sterling, 803 to 100 Japanese yen, 1037 to the euro, and 100 Hong Kong dollars will get you 78.931 renminbi. Looking at early European trade, the London FTSE 100 index is trading 17 points higher at 6,546, while London gold is trading at 1,311 US dollars and 53 cents per ounce. In Germany, the Frankfurt DAX is trading 8.5 points lower, while in Paris, the CAC 40 is also down by 6.5 points. That's the finance for Friday night. Join us for the main news after the break. Coming up, main news and weather report. Never been to Shenzhen? We're sure you haven't seen all the fun. Leisure time. Ramble round the southern Guangdong Greenway tonight at 8:30. 陈秘书叫我将订金存入新户口。陈秘书，你转咗银行户口咩？冇喎。俾佢识穿咗添。诶？嘉明喺外地有麻煩，要五千蚊應急。喂，嘉明啊，你去咗旅行咩？冇啊，又俾佢識穿。When receiving suspicious emails, verify the sender's identity to avoid losing any money. Verify suspicious emails. Uncover online swindlers. Bhutan, a holy Buddhist kingdom. Young monks are practicing sacred dance and learning their own tradition and art. But it's not all about dance and tradition. Behind that, you can explore a more spiritual inner world. Documentary World. Living Cultures. Tonight at 9. We heard you have some great products to sell. How about making ATV's 2013 Add Easy Package your one-stop solution? Our promotion reaches as far as the Pearl River Delta region and southern China. And our prices start at just $68,000. Call 3168-2232 or our mainland hotline now.
good evening. You're watching the main news on ATV. I'm Anne Sim. And I'm Edna Zay. Here are tonight's headlines. Tycoon Li Xiaoqi finalizes farmland donation for cheap housing as HKMA looks at adjusting curbs. Suspected H7N9 human infection in Guangdong brings deadly new strain closer to Hong Kong. China's inflation holds steady, giving Beijing room to cut interest rates and boost slowing economy. Property tycoon Li Xiaoqi is expecting that his plans to donate farmland in Yunlong for building cheap homes can be finalized within a couple of months. Li has approached the Housing Society with a revised plan after the government rejected his earlier offer. ATV's Emily Su reports. <laughs> Hong Kong's second richest man is out to show that he really wants to help the government provide more affordable housing to Hong Kong's masses. <laughs> Li Xiaoqi gave more details today about his latest offer to donate a plot of land in Yunlong's Ma Tin Park, where he wants to build 1,000 flats, each measuring 300 square feet. Although he still prefers to reserve these flats for young first-time buyers, he's letting the housing society decide who can buy the homes. The Henderson land boss admitted it's unfair to reserve the flats for young people only, while leaving out older home buyers who may need help just as much. But he added that it's better to help young buyers who have many years ahead to enjoy their homes, unlike the elderly. Lee said he's looking at the home ownership scheme as a model to set up application requirements for the flats. And the plan should be finalized with the Housing Society in a month or two. Including this site in Martin Park, Lee was originally planning to donate seven plots of farmland to the government to build cheap housing exclusively for young people. The homes he envisioned would also measure around 300 square feet each and cost no more than $1 million with no down payment required. In return, he wanted the government to waive the land premium and pay for the construction of the flats. But Development Secretary Paul Chan rejected his offer last month, implying that he has too many requirements. Without naming Lee, Chan said it's more appropriate for landowners to work with non-profit organizations such as the Housing Society. Earlier this week, Lee offered to revise his plan, as he's willing to pay the land premium around $300,000 per household and another $900,000 for the construction of every unit. The homes will also no longer be restricted to young people. Today, Lee said he had not yet decided whether or not he will hand over the remaining six plots to the Housing Society. But he pointed out that those sites will not be ready for at least two to three years anyway, due to the lack of infrastructure around them. On a slightly defined note, the property tycoon added that it would not bother him if the government rejected his offer again, as he could put the farmland to other use and make billions of dollars. Emily Su, ATV News. Li Xiaoqi is also expecting property prices to drop around 5 to 10 percent because of the government's tough measures to curb speculation. The Hong Kong Monetary Authority says it will study whether the local property market has turned the corner before deciding on any adjustment of its own curbs. An influx of mainlanders buying property, near zero interest rates and a lack of new supply have pushed home prices to record highs, making Hong Kong the most expensive real estate market in the world. Since taking office last July, Chief Executive Lung Chen Ying has imposed extra taxes on non-resident home buyers, doubled the stamp duty on all property transactions, raised minimum mortgage down payment requirements and sped up the approval process of new home sales permits for developers. According to local real estate agents, the effect of the government curbs has led to a significant drop in the number of property deals. But there's been no corresponding drop in prices. Figures for this past week have shown prices ending three weeks of rises, dropping slightly by 0.45 percent. But if compared with the end of 2012, the property price index has still risen by nearly 4 percent. Government data showed that in the first six months of the year, private flat prices have in fact jumped by 7% to a new high.
Still, the chief executive insisted on his blog on Monday that the government won't ease or scrap the curbs until there's a steady supply of new properties. <laughs> Property tycoon Li Xiaoqi told reporters today that he expects the market to go down by 5 to 10 percent, but not go up by 5 to 10 percent. The Henderson land chairman added that if home prices remain at the current levels, there will be room for the government to scrap its curbs. During a media lunch today, an HKMA spokesman refused to speculate on whether the government should relax its property curbs. The spokesman said it's still too early to say if the market has turned the corner. Last month, Hong Kong's de facto central bank told banks to further tighten lending to buyers of luxury homes and investment properties on concern that surging prices are getting out of hand. Today, the HKMA said it needs to study several factors before deciding on its next course of action. The HKMA will look at the number of property transactions, flat prices, home buyers' ability to pay mortgages and the interest rate environment before deciding whether to readjust or to restrict mortgage lending. The authority also wants banks to be cautious when lending and make sure they've carried out adequate risk management. In a related development, the chief executive wrote on his blog again today to refute pan-democrat lawmakers' claims that there are at least 150,000 empty flats across the city. Leung made it clear that at the end of last year there were only 48,000 empty units and the vacant flat rate was at its lowest in a decade. China has reported a suspected case of human H791 infection in Guangdong province, bringing the deadly new strain of bird flu closer to Hong Kong. Local health authorities have gone on alert after mainland researchers this week found the first case of human-to-human -human infection. The Guangdong Provincial Department of Health announced this afternoon that a 51-year-old woman in Huizhou is suspected of contracting the H7N9 avian flu virus. The patient is said to have had close contacts with live poultry. The woman is in a serious condition, but tests on 36 people who had close contact with the patient did not show any sign of infection. Huizhou is about 92 kilometers from Hong Kong, which means the suspected human case is the closest to us so far. Here in Hong Kong, Health Secretary Ko Ying Man convened a special meeting today after being notified of the case. Center for Health Protection officials warned that the deadly new strain of the bird flu virus may spread to Hong Kong. The warning is timely because Chinese scientists announced just this week that the H7N9 virus was probably transmitted from a father to his daughter on the mainland, killing both of them. There's no evidence of sustained human-to-human -human transmission. The main concern now is whether the virus can adapt further to cause, to have the potential to uh, spread, to have a virus, to have a potential to cause a pandemic. It's not unexpected that in the coming few months they may be imported case uh, into Hong Kong. The government has promised to remain vigilant. Frontline medical workers, especially at border crossings, have been put on alert to spot any possible cases. A Hong Kong University microbiologist warned that the virus is likely to be around for a while. If you look at um, bird flu involving um, the H5M1, uh, it first jump uh, from animal to human in 1997. After uh, 15 years, it's still there. It's still causing um, sporadic and sometimes uh, clusters of uh, human infection. So I think um, there is a very high chance of we can expect the X7 and 9 to come back. And in winter time, it's very likely there will be another run of uh, human transmission. The H7N9 virus has infected at least 133 people, killing 43 of them. More than 40,000 students who took this year's DSC exams have joined degree courses at the city's universities. They include seven students who scored top marks and will be pursuing courses at Hong Kong University. ATV's Arthur Erkeola reports. It was a big day for students across the city who took the Diploma of Secondary Education, or DSE, exams, as they got to find out whether they would be pursuing their further studies and courses they had been hoping to join. Out of the nine who scored top marks in the exams, seven have been snapped up by Hong Kong University. Among